Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we are rejoining our shuttle crew after a slight uh, correction of their orbit. As you'll notice here, this uh, I had to have the periapsis or perigee above 190 kilometers, which I did not have initially. I adjusted it, waited a day, and now we've got all of these check marks. So we are getting ourselves uh, lined up to make our deorbit burn and hopefully to put us on a course that might take us somewhere kind of close by to a runway maybe. Uh, if not, we'll have the expanse of North Africa to land on because I am certainly not going to be burning all of this fuel. But we're, yeah, <laughs> burn time of 16 minutes. I'm going to err more towards the braking side than the alignment side because we can use uh, aerodynamics to turn as we re-enter, as this thing is very prone to do anyway. So I'm very glad that I didn't already vent a whole lot of fuel because that uh, would have been tragic, all things considered. So we can pack that away and yeah, well, you can go away also. And we're just gonna keep a little eye here on our periapsis when it gets down to an appropriate level. We'll just go ahead and kill the engines. I'm not overly concerned with our telemetry uh, I know that we'll get home they've got lots and lots of life support and this thing has so much drag when you face that uh, bottom end into the wind so I don't think deorbiting it even with a periapsis at 104 I'm sure we'd be able to bring them home just fine so let's steer more towards our inclination change it's telling us 1400 meters per second which is a little ridiculous we don't even have that much in fuel. So I'm going to bring up our Delta V monitor. I would like to keep about three minutes of fuel uh, left in the orbiter just to use the RCS to keep it under control on the way down. And hopefully we can avoid some of the weird spinning, flopping around issues that we had last time. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, this redesign of Restless does feature a few more thruster ports. Uh, namely these and these that we're going to lose, a reposition of these thrusters here to lower on the wing surface more in line with the uh, center of mass. So I'm hoping that, uh, well, it does control a lot easier, but that's here in orbit. Again, I've not tried to dock it with anything because that just seems like it would be ridiculous. But I expect most of these thrusters to be burned off during re-entry because thruster ports are not rated for that sort of thing. I think their max skin temp's like 1,074 Kelvin. Something like that. Doesn't really matter. Alright, seven minutes of fuel remaining. I'm going to steer more into this inclination change. That's because uh, that's certainly going to deorbit us just fine. So really, I don't think I need to lower that uh, perigee any more than I already am. All right, let's check the map and see what our changes are looking like. Where is our prospective landing site? Over there. I mean, maybe. Wow, this might cost less fuel than I thought. It's moving pretty quickly. Oh, well, that's... Oh, wait, yeah, that's our... There's our... Oh, no. Yeah, we're coming down in here. That's our periapsis. We're probably going to land in this area. I don't know if we're even going to make it that far. Well, six minutes of fuel remaining. What does... How does that show up, I wonder? Oh, I forgot to turn on the fuel cells. Crap. Well, we've got some electric charge. We're going to go ahead and run those cells all the way back in just to make sure we don't lose life support or control. Activate cell. Not enough liquid hydrogen. Oh. Wouldn't that help? Okay. Activate cell. Yeah, and we're just going to run those all the way in. You know, we can actually deactivate this antenna. I've had issues with things inside the uh, 
inside cargo bays burning up and exploding, especially with antennas. Alright, well, I'm going to take a quick save. I would feel really bad killing these two. Yegor is one of our more accomplished pilots. John Oliver, noted comedian and mission specialist, is uh, taken a ride on the shuttle before, but never actually done anything of note. So, let's, uh, let's get to the time warps. Thunk. And there's our impact with the atmosphere. So we need to go ahead and get reoriented to... Uh, of course, I turned it the wrong way. We need to turn to prograde. So much fuel left in this thing. I hope we're not coming in too heavy. But uh, we can always pepper the deserts with super toxic hypergolics, can't we? <laughs> uh, that's a terrible idea. No one do that. I just, uh, I'm not sure if the landing gear is going to accommodate this. It has certainly never been actually tested. We've landed this thing once, and it was almost bone dry at the time. Now, what I am going to do is rebalance some things. Oh, hey, look at that. We've got liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen in there, too. Very interesting. All right, so we're going to pump some fuel forward. Because I think that had a lot to do with our instability issues last time. Uh, I have not tested it since, so y'all are in for just as much a ride as I am. And for the time being, I'm going to lock those tanks. If we need to unlock them later, we will. And I think I do still have both of these. Considering they're... Oh, really? Where did I just pull the rest of that stuff from? What tank did that come from? Oh, man. That one's full. Oh, I did it backwards. I'm dumb. Out, out. Lock, lock. I'm really dumb. <laughs> okay. You can see our center of mass slowly shifting a little bit forward. Okay. Lock this open for the time being. Close that. Open up both of these and hit out. And uh, watching fuel balancing maneuvers is just, like, super awesome. All right, now you can go away. So, let's hope that helps quite a bit. Make sure all of our other laterally aligned tanks are even. Okay. Uh, let's let's take them home. Copious usage of time warp things. Is it going to be another nighttime landing? Let's come out of time warp before we check. Mm, probably. <laughs> Although we'll be coming into the sun, so maybe by the time we get there... Oh, dude, are we all the way over here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh this is not good. This is really, really, really not good. Hmm. So actually, instead of that, I'm going to just uh, angle kind of into it a little bit more. Reduce our angle in hopes that we don't... Uh, 
that we are not forced to land in the middle of the ocean. I did not come prepared for any of that. Because, yeah, we haven't even crossed over South America yet. We still have uh, a long way to go. This periaps is probably going to sink another... Oh, boy. Okay, well, this just got really interesting. We might have to do an emergency splashdown landing because I had a dumb. So, like most re-entries, uh, this one took a very long time, so I've done you all the favor of speeding it all up. There we are passing over uh, South America and starting to burn off some of our RCS ports. But we kind of knew that was going to happen anyway. Uh, I know some of you have suggested some uh, mods to help aid in the re-entry and the angling of such, although I am fighting some instability issues here with RSS, and I don't want to compromise this save file because it will cost us the series in total. And that is uh, simply just not an option. I am far too invested in this to give up on it now. So this is the point where it really starts to fight with me and wants to come in butt first. And I'm starting to wonder if it's not so much a matter of the weight balance, since I have all of the fuel shifted forward, and yet it's still trying to uh, wiggle around like this. But I think it has to do with the tailplanes being masked from the uh, airstream by the wing surface. So I'm wondering if that might have something to do with it. But I think... Uh, tickle, yeah... Fiddling with that will probably just involve a redesign, although this is a very capable design. I think we can do a little better. Maybe STS-3 will be a different craft entirely. So here's where I got to pick up on a new and interesting bug. I tried to vent some fuel, which you'll notice here in a second, but if you hit the fill button while you're venting fuel and spinning out uncontrollably, it will actually fill the tanks magically from absolutely nowhere, which is not a bug I wanted to have since having more fuel at this point is more of a liability than a benefit. But we have come into view of the coast of Africa now, which is good, which means, uh, barring anything absolutely tragic happening, we will be able to touch down on some terra firma just as soon as we move through these uh, inky black clouds, preventing us from seeing much of anything. Um, this thing does glide really well, as uh, if you saw the first uh, STS mission re-entry, you may have noticed. And now that we're below the clouds, we've got the gear out, and we're just going to start to bleed off some speed as we're coming in for our final approach and touchdown. Now back, obviously, at regular speed, because the craft was fighting me a lot on this, trying to keep its nose up, so you'll actually see me trying to nose it down just a bit to keep it from stalling. Just to... Oh, and yeah, the bounce. Great. Now we are well below stall speed. Oh, God. But it still wants to nose up. Come on. Oh, a little rougher than I would have liked, but we're on the ground. Nothing broke. And we just got to adjust our friction control on these back wheels back up. Come on. There we go. And with the brakes already applied, that will bring us slowly to a stop. <sighs> well, that was a bit of a struggle. But we're down. We're on the ground. We're not bouncing back into the sky and terrifying me with perspective stall. Uh. <laughs> there are lots of supplies on board, and after what was only marginally better of uh, a re-entry than STS-1, STS-2 is safe. I'm going to switch landing sites before I recover this so that I can get more money back because I'm cheap like that. But uh, that's going to do it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, I do greatly appreciate it. Sorry once again for the nighttime non-runway landing. I actually, I tried for a runway this time, but uh, apparently North Africa is just a magnet for space shuttles. At least here. So, anyway, that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks. I will see all of you next time. Till then, see you later.